Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to HIV story time, y'all. Listen, 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 listen. I have some good stuff to tell y'all this morning. I am so, so, so excited. First, I'm going to do something different. I'm taking my medicine this morning. I'm getting straight to it. Let me give y'all a little quick update. Listen, I've been taking my, my HIV meds as usual, and I've been taking my um blood pressure pill. Listen, I still been having those headaches. But one day, I didn't, two days, I didn't take my blood pressure pills. I had no headache. <clears throat> so, I know for sure that it's the the um, the medication side effect. So, this is the small pill. Take that one. I'm drinking more water too, y'all. Thank y'all for going along the way with me before I take my meds. But listen, uh... I'm so excited, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. I got a lot to say this morning. Confessions of a delivered woman living with HIV that used to be a sad chick. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> I'm so silly. Listen, y'all. So, lately, it's been... It's been a lot going on, listen, okay, with my dating life, um, with my love life, with my life, right? So, yesterday, well, I've been feeling sad chick, sad chickish ways for maybe mm, since about July. So, I kept saying, I ain't no sad chick. You try to treat me like a sad chick, you know what I'm saying? I kept saying that, but I wasn't really even realizing why I was saying it. And the reason why I was saying it, like, y'all know. Y'all know I've been HIV positive for 17 years. Let's get that straight. Um, y'all know that. It's coming up on my 18th year, actually, next month. Um, but I was married. And I also had a, a sad nigga that I messed with on the side. And he had a girlfriend. So I was a sad chick. This is, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. I've been saying that. And if you are a new follower, yes, I used to be a sad chick living with HIV. Yes. He did know my status and everything. And his girlfriend did, too. And I still was a sad chick. It was the worst time of my, my, my life. But that is my truth. I actually wrote a book about it called Stop Hating Sad Chicks, which I need to do uh, part two to that or to do another um another spinoff to it because especially what i'm experiencing now i have not messed around with him in maybe three years um and i'm divorced of course but i still i date now or whatever so i find myself still behaving like a sad chick and i'm gonna tell y'all a few things this is this is how I, i'm learning i, I told y'all I am forever healing this is a forever healing journey that i'm on and uh, this situation don't really per se have something to do with HIV, but because I'm a woman living with HIV, I'm putting it together that way. Because this, I know other people um, that's living with HIV um, may be experiencing it, so I'm just, I'm just trying to shed some light and also show you guys that all sad chicks ain't bad. They are human. If you read my book, I explain that don't hate her hate the the um the spirit is a spirit that that lies in all of us it's the sin in a sense not the spirit is a sin that's in us not um the sinful spirit is not just us per se we all want the same thing here on earth we all want to be loved we all want to be valued we all want companionship um not all of us but i'm gonna say at least 90 percent of us out here but for the most part, I have not been a sad chick in three years. Um, I'm divorced, and I'm going through my healing process. I'm on a forever healing journey. So let me tell y'all what's been going on. So dating with different people is maybe... Dating is dating, right? Dating don't mean I'm having sex with, with multiple people. Let's keep that in mind. When you say you're dating, you're dating to see who is, who is the best candidate to be in relationship with, right? Let's just make sure that you guys know that. I'm not smashing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not smashing 25, three, four different niggas. That's not the case. But in communication with one person that I really like a lot. Um, okay, I'm going to give y'all an example first of why this all came to my mind yesterday. Me and him was together. Let's say I'm right here. He's on the side of me, and his phone is on the his phone is on the right side of me, and he's on the left side of me. And his phone started to ring, and I spent the round like I literally spent the round. I got up, I was literally sitting this way, got up off the bed, and turned around and started facing his way. He, and as I'm doing it, he like who calling me? I'm like I don't know. He was like who calling me? He said it again, and I I ain't say nothing. I just. I ain't paying no attention. 
So he's like, dang, why you um move like that? I told you to tell me who was on my phone. I didn't say nothing. I was like, I ain't no, and I, I didn't say nothing. And I started laughing. We started laughing. Um, and I was like, I still have, I still have sad chick ways. I said, not only sad chick ways. I lived in a, in a, I lived in a house with a man that I knew was cheating. I knew he was cheating. I even became the cheater. And a part of that is don't touch that phone. If you don't want to argue, you don't want to be into it. You don't touch that phone. If you ain't ready to make no type of changes, do not touch that phone. I did years of touching phones, and it was hell in the house. And I had decided I wanted to keep my house together, and I wanted to keep the peace. So I never looked at phones. I never went to phones. You see what I'm saying? So now that I'm I'm a, I'm a fully grown woman now that's living in a different type of mindset and and a woman that desires to live in a healthy environment and have healthy relationships... I'm learning that I still have that type of behavior. I still have sad chick behavior. Um, and I'm going to pray about it. I'm moving forward. And I'm just going to keep on going. I'm just sharing y'all. I'm sharing with y'all my testimony, what I've been going through, not even realizing that I'm going through it. So me and him had the conversation. He was like, why? And I explained to him about my, my what happened in my marriage. <laughs> I explained that to him. And we just talked about it. And I told him that I was going to make a video about it. But not only that, I don't call him. He never told me not to call him. I call him whenever I want to. And if he's available, because he's really a busy man, he got he be having a lot going on in his life. Um, but if he see my name on his phone pop up, he's gonna call me. And if if and I know this for a fact, he made that clear from jump. If he see that I called, whenever he is available, he's gonna call me back. That's these are just facts. But I ain't I just I believe it. I believe him when he say that. I ain't never tried it though. Why well, don't call him? Because sad chicks don't just call. They don't because they don't know if they with their kids. They don't know if they with their girl. They with their family. So sad chicks just don't don't slide through lines. Just don't. Well, it's a different. It's a, it, see, it's it's so many different type of sad chicks. The sad sad chick that really care about what you care about. Y'all gotta get that out of my book too. The sad chick that care about what you care about is not finna slide through your line like that. But a, sla a sad chick that want what she want to want want to have. She wanted. She's definitely gonna call whenever she feel like it. That just wasn't who I was. So I wait. I never call him. Right. He called me around the same times every day. I like notice like clockwork. Right. Because I know how he, I know his schedule, just like, he know, my schedule. Right. So if he don't call me around that time, I feel like something is wrong because we are we are creatures of routine. Right. If he off the routine, I'd be like, wait a minute, something got to be wrong. Immediately, I think something is wrong because I am so used to him following his routine. Right weird i do not text this man good morning why that man deserve a good morning just like us women we love our good morning texas it's something about first thing in the morning and a nigga send you a good morning text that make you feel like oh this nigga thinking about me top of the morning men deserve that too they deserve for you to send them a good morning text and let you know, let them know that you, you, you they on your mind i don't do that and i wish i could i'm finna start how about that now that I'm realizing these sad chick tendencies that I still have, I'm finna make changes. But he deserve a good morning text. He deserve uh have a wonderful, blessed day. Even if I didn't study that night, because y'all know I study the word of God all at night when I'm at work, or even when I'm at un, not at work. If I get a word, I should be able to get that man a word on his on his day, I, on his way, getting ready for work. I could I should pray for him through text message. I should do that. I'm not I'm not who I used to be. I'm learning how to be a godly woman. I'm learning these these new um ways to live and handle real men, not little boys. You see what I'm saying? It's weird, right? Okay. Now this one is a little a little personal, but I'm gonna share it anyway. I'm gonna share this one because I saw this 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 one this morning. When you are a cheater, <clears throat> when you are a cheater, you behave a certain type of way. So that your mate won't won't really pay attention to your cheating behavior. So when you get dressed and all dialed up and all that, sometimes they be like, who you getting dressed for? Who you looking good for? So when you know you finna go and see that person that you usually go, go and see, you dress down. Y'all have a, a, a different type of language, um, how y'all handle each other and how y'all do what y'all do. You just kind of dress down, right? So, and I, I learned this from, I learned, listen, I learned all this from the, the guy I was cheating with. He used to always say, I'm like, let me get, you don't never, you don't never be suited and booted when I see you, but I see you on Facebook and you all, you all together. 
he like, man, I don't be doing that when I be finna come see you because she gonna have something to say. And I thought about like, dang, my husband, he 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 be suiting the boot every day. But when he finna go see a chick, you can tell. You can just tell the aura is different. They got, they got, um, he used to have, I'm about to go see my whole, uh, <laughs> whole type of, uh, a vibe that he had. Listen to music and everything. So I always could feel or sense when he was finna go be with somebody. But that was one thing that he did. He did not go get suited and booted when he was going to see me. And not only that, cheaters, they cheat when they mate is at home at work. Because when they mate is at work, they can't keep calling. They can't keep texting. They busy. They occupied. Right? I don't know why I just said it. I just that just was a um a add to what I was gonna say because that it ain't on my notes. Um another thing that I noticed that I do when I'm with my friend. <sighs> Now, when we was together, when we was together last night, his phone was was face side up, like this, sitting on the counter. Mine's was on the bed, face down. <laughs> Mine's on the bed, face down. Why? Why's my phone face down? Who am I hiding from? I'm divorced. I don't have to hide no more. I don't have to move that way. But my mentality is still the same. I still do the same thing. Listen, my phone stay on silent. I still have my phone on silent. I still have my notifications off, literally. The only, only, this is weird. I'm telling y'all, this is so weird. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I other people has, I have experiences. I have not, I cannot be the only one. My phone is on silent a lot. A whole lot. Not only silent, I don't, my notifications is not on my phone. You know why? Because if he come past your phone, if you a cheater, and and the mate come through the phone, they can see they can just slide the screen down and see all the notifications. So you don't keep notifications on your phone so nobody see. My phone is locked. Why is my phone locked? It's not locked just for security for when nobody see my phone to go on my phone. No, my phone is locked because I don't want nobody going my phone to see what's in there. Who is the somebody? I'm not with nobody. I still have that mentality of a cheater. It's weird. Oh my God, I hate it. But I'm about to get me together. I'm about to get my life together. Seeing all this to say, me as a woman that's divorced, that's surviving HIV, that used to be a side chick, and that's going through her healing process, I have learned, and I've learned in the last few days, really, really just being with him yesterday, and it just opened up everything that I've been experiencing. I still have... <sighs> I still have sad chick mentality when it comes to men and I have to really get that together if I desire to be in a healthy relationship because if I get in a, in a relationship now I'm, I'm dating now and I'm talking about relationship if I get in a relationship with a man that was with a woman that was a cheater before and I behave the way I behave with these small little things he's gonna think I'm cheating if I'm always got my phone face down I'll, it's just certain little things you you, you I just have to do better with it. And I may get with a man that don't don't know none of this and ain't, ain't experienced it. But just forget, forget about if I get with somebody. I need to do this for me. I need to stop. I need to stop all this stuff because it's unhealthy. It's so, so unhealthy. But I decided to, to share with some confessions with y'all um, because y'all need to know. Like, y'all need to know that I'm not perfect and I still go through stuff. I'm still healing from stuff. Stuff that I have been, been healed and delivered from. Oh, y'all know I'm going to be preaching to the choir. But when I learn an area that I still need work in or that I'm working on, I am always going to come and share that with y'all because I know that somebody can um, benefit from it, from the experiences that I had, the, the, the experiences that I've had, the experiences that I'm having, and the, the experiences that I'm about to have. Y'all deserve to go along the, along the way with me. Y'all deserve that because we all um, going through something and nobody's perfect. But if you are determined to be the best version of yourself that I always talk about, these things that I talk about that's small and um, not, not that bad and it's innocent because everything that I'm saying is really innocent. It's nothing, it's nothing bad going on right now that I can say, oh my God, I need to stop doing that. That's horrible. No, it's not horrible. It's just I went 17 years, 20 years in a toxic relationship. And it's going to take a lot of time for me to unpack all that toxic um, behavior. It's going to take some time for that. And I just pray to God that God give me um, the type of man. God send the man 
in my life that's able to to handle my my healing process and actually walk this walk with me i really pray that god um send me somebody that's understanding about this transition that i'm going through because i'm really going through a transition and i'm actually excited about it because for me to be able to see um these things this actually shows my growth this shows that i have grown in so many different areas because i can just keep doing this and keep behaving this way but i i choose not to i choose to have um healthy relationship i desire that i just des i desire to have godly relationship <coughs> with a man that is healthy and um yeah healthy healthy sounds good a lot, a lot of times we've been in toxic relationships for so long, we think that it's normal. So I desire a healthy, godly relationship with a man, a man that understand, um, understand what I'm going through and I understand what he's going through because we all going through something. You ain't going to be the perfect person. If you're looking to meet a perfect person, hmm, you just, you just might as well stay with Jesus. <laughs> you might as well stay with Jesus and wait on him to come because you're not going to find another perfect person. Everybody is going through something. So for me, the best advice I can give anybody that's going through this, um, keep learning yourself. The desire you have to, for a relationship, have that same desire to become a better version of you. Because the better you, you become for you, you're going to be the best mate that you can ever be for, for somebody else. And that's what this thing is all about, right? I desire, I desire to be married. I desire to be a wife. So before I um, become a wife... Well, I'm actually a wife already. Y'all know the Bible say he that finds it a he that find it a wife find it a good thing and find favor with God. That means that you are a wife before you actually become a wife. When he find you and he gets you, he already know that you're a wife because of the attributes that you have, right? So I'm already a wife. I, I'm just I have those attributes, but under the surface of those attributes is certain things that every woman needs to deal with um, that will make her become better for herself first. That will really enhance those um, attributes that she that she have. So anywho, that's what I'm working on. Working on working on me because when my husband come, y'all, when the man that God have for me, when he come, I'm gonna be ready for the assignment that me and him have together and and marriage and um in the union in the covenant that ain't just that shouldn't be taken for granted so i'm I'm getting ready y'all and i'm so excited about it so y'all tell me what y'all think do any of y'all that used to be a sad chick do y'all have sad chick tendencies still not only that if you used to be a cheating man too y'all y'all be y'all go through a lot too y'all being trying to be delivered do you do you go through anything that you used to go through as far as sneaking around um how you used to sneak around on your wife how you used to do things with your sad chick um and you used to cover it up all that let's let's talk about it y'all let's talk about it open discussion baby let's get to it um anywho happy monday Today is the last Monday of September. I am so excited about it, y'all. So, 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 so excited. Today is the first day of the rest of all of our lives. And it's up to you to decide what type of day you are going to have. Hmm. And listen, y'all already know how I'm coming. Do not forget to love on yourself. It's the best thing you can do for yourself. It's love on yourself. It will make you feel so much better. And that's all this, this thing is about is feeling better. Not about money. We ain't going to think about money today. We ain't going to think about winning today. We just going to think about feeling better. Because when you start feeling better, it's like, it's like a, um, let's say like a dead body, right? <laughs> I'm always trying to make up stuff. It's like a dead body that's dead. But the, 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 the body is actually alive. But the insides of that person is dead, dead. But then once you start, once you make a choice to feel better while you laying that dead, you start to, your, your body starts to heal itself. You start to heal and heal. And then you start to become live again. And when it's time for you to rise, before you can rise, you have to build up your strength so, so, so strong that when you do rise, you never fall like that again. And that's exactly how I feel like my life has, was, was at first. I was down and I was dead. My body was just, just still. I was, I was dead. I was sad. I was depressed. I was going through. And I kept telling myself, I want to be better. I want peace. I just kept saying these things to myself. And it's like my, my, my inside started to, <clears throat> my inside started to heal and heal and heal and heal. And, and I just, just, just felt good. <laughs> now that I have rose, I would never allow myself to die physically again. Never, never. Mm. 
not in that type of way. And I'm talking about the physical, mental death. It's a, it's a, it's a death that you, it's a death where you, you dead, but you're still alive. I never allow that to happen to me again. Mm -mm. But anyway, y'all, peace and sticky here. Hi, Grease, and y'all enjoy y'all Monday.